Hey hey, welcome to another episode of the Bionicle Inspiration series, a series where I cover the building techniques and mocks of the community to hopefully give you a few ideas or inspiration for future builds that you want to make or help you move along with something you're currently building, yeah, anything like that. Today we're going to be covering bioformers. Now, if you're like, what the heck is that, Ben? Uh, it's a Bionicle transform. There you go. <laughs> Uh, really easy, really simple. Without further ado, let's get started. But before we do, you may realize the audio sounds a little different this episode. I'm toying around with some microphones just to sort of see what, you know, see if I can improve them or if there's a better sound quality or something. Personally, I'm not too sure how I feel about this mic, so let me know in the comments. Uh, I will be trying a few others and I'll let you know. Uh, I still have the old one, so I may just switch back because I did quite like that one. But I'm um, just, just going to play around, so we'll see. Anyway, let us actually begin. So, the first mock we have today is by Kojo Creations, and is Grimlock from Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. Now, I may not like the Bayformer films, but I really, really like this mock. The, looking at the robot mode first off, it looks really awesome. And then going into the dino mode is a really, really sick looking dinosaur. Just before we, we talk about the actual transformation, there's a really awesome piece use uh, on the head there using the Onowa shoulders or claws, whatever they are. Uh, as a mouthpiece. It looks really good. They fit sort of teeth and a dinosaur vibe really well. Uh, and also we got uh, really simple eyes there with the sort of finger pieces and the claws. Like It's a really clever use of parts. I really like it. And also a really overall nice looking vibe for like a dinosaur. Really well shaped and everything. Now it's actually quite a very simple transformation and I think that's really awesome. Uh, you can see up here there's the head and then this sort of piece here with the I don't know, buzzsaw piece was one of the arm pieces. So essentially he's kind of just sort of swiveled the chest, moved the head back, and then like opened the mouth up and kind of extended the tail out. And that's the transformation. Now, semi-simple, not too hard, but I think that's kind of the beauty of this mock, is that you're able to get a really awesome robot mode and uh, dinosaur mode transformation. Um, without having to reverse engineer and overcomplicate it, it's nice and simple and really effective. And I think there's a lesson to learn there in terms of, you know, like, kind of coming into this, I can definitely see myself personally, like, freaking out. Like, oh my god, I don't have to just build a robot mode thing, I have to then have it transform, and oh my god, that sounds so scary. Um, whereas I think the beauty of this is it's just... Don't think about it. Just just build something, and and it can be super simple, and it'll still transform. And heck, even if it is simple, that's freaking amazing. And look at some of the actual Transformers sets. Their transformations are not always that spectacular, and you know, massive levels of engineering involved. Sometimes it's literally just flip it, and it's done. So there you go. And that essentially does it for Kojo's creations. So we're going to move on to the next mock by Yuri Fasio from Mock Pages. Uh, and this mock is called Surge Blaster. Now, I really, really like this mock. Who says that your transformation needs to be a car or a plane or a dinosaur like we saw before? Yuri's transformation for this is a little handheld uh, gun. And he doesn't have any photos of him actually holding it, but I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. Um, and that's really fun, because then you can kind of make some, I don't know, cosplay-style things out of the transformation. And you have seen that before with actual Transformer toys, which is awesome. And often some of the most fun ones, in my opinion. I, I had this one. It's a, it's a lovely little set. Um, so yeah, why not why not look at uh, transforming it into a sort of, uh, you know, prop, rather than an actual car or something. Now, uh, it also has a third transformation, so it's a triple changer, which is awesome. Um, it doesn't really look like it changes all that much. It kind of looks like it's just flipped one or two pieces and then added a little flame and boom, it's a spaceship. So that's really, really cool. Now, something that I really like about this is it's almost 100%, in fact, it probably is 100% CCBS Hero Factory. Sure, it has a Ben 10 torso in there, but you know you could easily switch that out with a Hero Factory torso. Uh, and what's really cool about it is, yeah, you don't really need a lot of parts for this. I, I kind of see this being, oh, I could probably do the maths, but I'm, you know, that's a lot of, that's a lot of effort. Uh, it's probably maybe like two or three sets. Uh, and, and honestly, you could easily recreate this using, you know, very few CCBS parts. Um, and I had someone comment a few days ago, they're like, oh, I really want to see a, uh, an episode on just using CCBS. And honestly, 
I mean, I'll probably still do that as an episode, but this is a really good example of that, just using straight CCBS to achieve what's actually a really awesome solid lock. Another thing as well, typically Hero Factory CCBS parts are sort of a lot bigger and shell-like and stuff, like these arms here, they cover a lot. Uh, and I think that would be really helpful with building a transformer, because obviously to achieve the transformation you might have a few gaps and stuff, uh, and typically these pieces are quite large, so it sort of helps cover up anything. And often the best transformers are the ones that you can't tell are transformers, and so kind of, yeah, hiding the illusion of transformation uh, often makes it look a lot cooler, and I think CCBS pieces really help with that. Another awesome, awesome thing here that Yuri actually says himself in this uh, post on Mock Pages is that he really wanted to build a, like, bioblaster, as he called it. And he was kind of like, oh gosh, how am I going to do that? And then he literally picked up one of the mocks he just made, started toying around with it, and then realized that he could actually transform it. Uh, and then he said he changed like two or three pieces around just to make it look a bit more like a proper transformation, and he was done. And that to me blows my mind. He actually says at the bottom, uh, from now on, remember to always mess around with your figures you build. You might have built a bioform without knowing. How cool is that? That's so cool. So yeah, pick up some of your box. They might transform. Who knows? Uh, and, and like he says, you might have to toy around with like a couple of things. But I think that's amazing. The fact that it, it was literally just playing around with it. You don't even need to necessarily pre-plan the mock in terms of its transformation. You can just pick up something and toy with it. And that's awesome. So, great job, Yuri. Great, great job. Final mock we have today is by Shadow Gear 6335 and it's Dino Knight. Now, this is fairly similar to the first one in terms of being essentially Grimlock. Uh, but I wanted to cover a few different things in this. So, I have been talking about some of the actual... Uh, Transformers uh, in terms of the toys uh, and how they have kind of influenced a few things. But this one, in my opinion, is a really good example of that. So what I see with this, and I don't know if this was Shadow Gear's inspiration or not, but is the Beast Wars Megatron. Uh, and you can see a lot of parallels to this and Shadow's Mark in terms of the you know dinosaur head being the arm and the tail being the other arm uh, and just sort of the overall shape and stuff. So in my opinion... Pick up a Transformer, have it there to play with, toy around with, or even just look at photos if you don't really want to pick it up. Or maybe you have some from when you were a kid. Uh, and honestly, just copy the design. It, you're not stealing it. You're using what's already a good pre-existing uh, shell or format, essentially, and then turning it into Lego. Uh, and that's essentially what this mock is in terms of Beast Wars uh, Megatron. So yeah, go do that. It's The work's already there for you. There's no... you. No point reinventing the wheel, so go on ahead and use it. Uh, another really cool thing about Bioformers in general is it kind of allows you to do cool but kind of unconventional things. Like, for example, both of these limbs being, you know, one a weapon and one a sort of little, like, stubby arm claw thing. You know, typically on a general mock, that might look a little odd, but the fact that Transforms makes that really cool and really sells that. Uh, and, yeah... That's an awesome thing, in my opinion, about bioforms. You can be really unconventional with limbs and things like that. Yeah. And like I said before, the best bionicle mocks, uh, well, not bionicle mocks, bioformers or transformers, in my opinion, are the ones that you can't tell it's a transformer. Uh, you know, seeing the robot mode and being like, oh, that's a pretty cool dinosaur. What? It transforms? That thing where it kind of blows your mind, honestly, in my opinion, is the best. So if you're building something, I say aim for that because that always blows my mind. Uh, and that doesn't do it, because I have a little bonus mock here. Uh, this is another one by Yuri Facio, and is called Beastron 5-in-1. Now, some of these transformations are very simple and very effective, like this guy transforming into this guy, it looks awesome. Uh, but it essentially does a Devastator or any of the other, you know, Bruticus, all the other guys, uh, and they all combine together uh, into a big uh, combiner bot guy. And that's awesome. I'm not going to cover a huge amount on this mock just because, you know, I've kind of said everything already, but it's another really cool idea to build a few smaller ones and see how they can combine together. And kind of building that with that in mind, in my opinion, makes it look awesome. And something that he said at the bottom here, man, it's interesting reading Yuri's uh, posts because he reveals all those secrets. That's awesome. Um, he said that all of these builds, and I mean, technically you can see it, I guess you didn't have to read it, but shh. Uh, all of these builds are built off basic 
Hero Factory bodies and like formats essentially. So again, you don't have to overcomplicate it. You can literally just have uh, you know a typical uh, Hero Factory style build with the torso and the limbs and the head, and you know you don't have to go fully custom and stuff, and it can still transform and look amazing. So there you go. That essentially does it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any suggestions for future themes or mocks that you want to see in the series, whether they're your own or someone else's, let me know. Uh, if you check the links in the description, there's a few links to like my Instagram, my Facebook, my mock pages, and my Flickr. Pretty much every single one of those places you can comment or send me a message saying, hey, I'd like to see this in there, and post a link or whatever. Uh, or just do it in the comments below. So yeah, uh, if you want to see some cool stuff or have some ideas, let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, be sure to leave a comment. Always like to hear some feedback. Uh, and uh, yeah, happy building, guys. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.